joined by Cabrini University head coach Steve Culper, senior defender Nate Bass, Boss Bass, I'm sorry, and uh, senior attacker Jordan Krug. Uh, coach, if you would mind opening with a statement on the game, and then we will open up to questions. Sure. Uh, great game. Um, hard fought throughout. Um, game of runs. Um, and, uh, you know, Hats off to Salisbury University, their program, Coach Berkman, their players. I mean, they are the standard that we all play to um, in this game um, with the amount of national championships and All-Americans and, and the, 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 um, the class that they run their program with from top to bottom. It starts with him, uh, and it emulates down through every one of his assistants and players. So to, to have an opportunity to compete against them is always an honor. Uh, and then have an opportunity to compete against them at this level in, in the national semifinals um, and to come out victorious is, is, is truly a benchmark. We really always talk about in recruiting and, and um, when we look at players and the lens that we look through in our recruiting is, is can these guys help us beat Salisbury? And, and that's no disrespect to anyone else in Division Three because there's so many good teams out there and Amherst and Williams who were in the other semifinal and Amherst, you know, great programs. But for us being in the South and having a team like that in our region, you know, that's that's the barometer that we've always used. And these guys were recruited with through that lens uh, and the players down in that room. Honest to God, that's, that's the question that we always ask as a coaching staff. Can they play in this game? And can they be successful in this game? So that's the greatest compliment I can give that program. Uh, and to come out victorious down here um, is, uh, is just a you know, wonderful tribute to our program and to the young men in our program and, and, and the foundation that we've tried, tried to lay over the years. So. Thank you, Coach. Welcome up questions. Coach, you've had a lot of success in the past couple of years, uh, plenty of accolades, and especially in the NCAAs, but you never really were able to get over that hump to the semifinals, and then you finally get there. And you have to come to Salisbury, who of course ended your season a couple of years ago. And yeah. Now you're able to get this win on Seagull turf, and yeah. then of course you get to see another new face in Amherst in the national championship. You mentioned some of these senior guys, but what's it like to really get over that hump and, and get to a space where you know you mentioned it? That's what you're shooting for yeah. every year, and you finally get there. Well, the irony in it is that the, every year we've gotten to the quarterfinals, we've lost here to Salisbury. So we just <laughs> needed to flip that, right? You know what I mean? We just didn't need to play them in the quarterfinals. Apparently, if. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we've, the teams that we've lost to, those three times we were in the quarterfinals, every time we lost, they went on to win a national championship. So, and last year, no different. We lose to Wesleyan, who goes on to win. So, you know, when we bow out of the tournament, we bow out to some pretty good teams, um, and usually on the road. Um, you know, I don't think we've lost a home playoff game since 2007. Uh, no, I'm sorry, we lost one in 2015. How can I forget that? Science. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, but, you know, that being said, when we, you know, you, you work really hard in the regular season to earn home games in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and this year we got one more than we had gotten in years past. So that we, you know, we were, we were fortunate for that. Uh, and then to have the comeback against York and then to play for the four quarters. I mean, it, it's, it, what it means is we were 1-0 and today. And that's what we've talked about all year. You know, it really doesn't have to be any more than that. Um, it's just coming down here and treating this game um, as what we've done each year. I think, you know, I've said it in this these last couple weeks, because we lost our AQ because of the new conference, um, we had to play ourselves into this tournament by stacking as many 1-0 days together. And uh, I'm going to continue to say that. And that, that we started talking about that last May. And I don't know if that gave us a different focus or a different edge. Um, but, you know, at this point, we're just going to continue to ride that for one more game, you know. So it feels good. To, short, short answer, uh, it feels good. So. Coach, can you talk about these last two games in specific? I mean, just a little bit ago in March, you were you lost to York, then you lost to Salisbury, and then you go on this 13-game win streak where now you beat both of those teams in the same fashion. So talk about the game plan yeah. coming in today and coming into York. How did you make those adjustments to where they were completely different games? Well, I'm going to pat the schedule maker on the back um, because I did that on purpose, right? I knew we were going to probably play York and Salisbury in the NCAA tournament, so and but I didn't know that we were going to end up playing them back-to-back, -back, but I knew they were going to be two really strong teams in the region. Um, so... Yeah, you know, that losing York in the Friday night and then having, you know, uh, off Saturday and come back to practice when Sunday, Monday, Tuesday to get ready for Salisbury, you know, we knew it was a challenge and and we came up short that day. So, we're, you know, you're coming out 0-2 in that situation. But, you know, we competed in those games and we were we took the good out of those games and we built off those games. And, you know, we've gotten some guys back that were hurt for those games. And so those were – we didn't really make a lot of big adjustments, to be honest with you. It wasn't – it was just getting some guys back healthy. It was trying to just stay focused on the goal of being one and zero each day, um, and um, and really just you know really just trying to take it um, that each game as its own little enterprise. And, and I think they've done a good job to that at this point, and, and hopefully we do a good job with that this week. So.
big part of that start? Uh, how big was it for you guys to come out strong and uh, just build a little bit of confidence? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was huge. I mean, that's, you know, what got us going, what got us rolling. And, uh, you know, talking before the game, we really needed, like, we knew that we needed to do that. We needed to punch them in the face right away because we were they're going to punch us and then just keep running us over, you know? So, you know, we've played them so many times. I mean, I think it's like my fifth or sixth time playing them in my four years. So, you know, we're used to the up and downs that they have, and then they can just go on a run, and then just we're too far away. So we knew that we had to come out hot, aggressive. I mean, we didn't do it against York, so I think that was more of an emphasis, uh, like on the offensive guys. And uh, just across the board, you know, we just knew that, you know, one goal and one half is not going to take you to the NCAA uh, championship. But, uh, you know, we knew that we just you know, had to buy in, and our game plan was tack them. Attack right away. You know, we knew our guys and beat their guys, and we just needed the confidence. And I think, you know, Coach Hill and offense coordinator really got us in our heads and really talked to us a lot through it and calmed us down and gave us that, uh, you know, motivation. Yeah. Coach, it's Philadelphia based school now with the national championship being at Lincoln Financial Field. How does it feel for you guys to have gotten to this point knowing that you're really going home yeah. to play in, in the biggest game? That's crazy. You know, I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Um, you know, you go to Eagles games there and you, you know, you go in the stadium. And so to play in that, that venue, obviously, for all the kids from the area um, and anyone who obviously is a fan of the NFL and just seeing that um, will be an experience for our guys. You know, it'll be a first time experience. And how we manage this week, you know, and how we manage our the mental approach and the physical approach um, is, is crucial. You know, I'm sure everything is different. The sight lines are different. The acoustics are different. All those things are different. Um, and so we're going to have to manage it. But again, we're going to stay true to the goal of being one and zero, and we're going to you know try to manage those things as best as possible. But yeah, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? That is unbelievably pretty cool for uh, the guys from Philadelphia and the guys that have come from Southern California who've been here now. Uh, you know, and um, you know, I'm sure they're going to. They, you could pick any stadium, and it would be pretty cool but yeah it's uh that's uh something very special and we want to represent the city and, and represent our program as best we can so nick it's been a it's been a long ride <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long ride for you to get to this point um just talk about how it feels you've been through a lot of injuries you've been through position changes how does it feel now to be going to the national championship game um, it's it's pretty full circle. I mean, when I was a little kid, obviously you're you're, you know, you're watching Salisbury and these other top teams. Um, but you know, it's it's nice to kind of I think just as a team, not even individually, we face a lot of adversity. Not just you know, I guess you could reference my career as well, but in particular just this year alone, um, and really seeing you know in comparison this team to the previous years, um, really no no panic and and a sense of um, you know. Uh, you know, teamwork, essentially, um, everyone not kind of abandoning the ship and our goal, you know, like Coach Colfer said, just going 1-0 every day. If that's the game, practice, you know, a rep, a drill, whatever it is. But, yeah, definitely full circle. I mean, you talk about him today, too. I mean, he, you know, and, and you watch the game, you know, we pulled him out just to get his head right. He was having a little, you know, and we were having trouble communicating. We got him, you know, he came, took a break, you know. That's, you know, symbolic of his journey, his career, you know, the injuries he's been through and, and, and position changes. and. You know the microcosm that is that today. You know, and and getting right on the sideline and going back in and starting off the second half and playing a tremendous second half and being one of the big reasons why we win the game. You know, I mean, I think that to his performance today is 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 really just his career in a nutshell. You know, I couldn't be prouder. Nick, the, um, we're used to seeing Salzburg on this field, even in the six on six, lots of good ball movement and mm -hmm. ending up with a wide open look on the crease. You guys in this tournament, tournament run seem to lock up Salzburg uh, as much as anybody in the six. On Um, I think, you know, it kind of started with that game that we had a month, month and a half ago, you know, versus them in the regular season. And I think as a unit, collectively, we kind of took a lot of pride in our in our performance, in particular the second half of the regular season. And, you know, we weren't happy with that. Um, and, but, you know, we kind of put that in the rearview mirror. And, and, you know, really this game and the York game was a chance, you know, for us as a unit to prove that, um, you know, that those mistakes were correctable and, and we were able to kind of get over that hump. Um, I mean, in particular, this game, you know, obviously credit to our coaching staff. I think we had a pretty good game plan in place in comparison to the, you know, the last time that we played them in the regular season. Um, and, you know, this full week of preparation, we just kind of bought into what that game plan was. And no one was, you know, trying to, to be the hero, you could say, or do something independently. It was kind of like we're going to fly around as a unit and all six guys are going to be on the same page. Jordan, you had a great season offensively, 100 points coming into this one, so I think it's safe to say you might have known that you would be matched up against one of their top defenders and you really had some early success against their long poles they tried to switch up defending you you saw short stick face guarding and a couple different looks 
what were you seeing offensively that kind of gave you that early success? And then afterwards, after they tried to make an adjustment, how did you adjust? Because, I mean, you had the hat trick early, but you were able to respond after they made that defensive adjustment with four more. Yeah, um, I think, you know, just going into it, I mean, we did a lot of film. I mean, the past three days, we did film every single day. And Coach Mita is, I mean, his three years here as GA, I mean, he's improved so much. And, you know, he, he deserves a lot of, you know, the – respect and a lot of this uh you know winning success because of him i mean he really breaks everything down for us so well so you know our iq lacrosse wise has grown so much because of him um and you know i you know watch we watch a lot of film and we know what we're good at and what you know what they're not good at and what they are good at also so um you know i really just we knew just we had to attack him right away you know we just had to go right at him right in the throat we had to die uh, dodge with you know dominance and you know dodge a score every single time. So, you know, a lot of it's kind of thing mental too. Um, I think the York game, kind of a little uncomfortable, you know, not used to everything about York. But, um, you know, I think here we were just very comfortable and we knew what we were going to get thrown at us. So, you know, right away it was just, just let us run. Um, and then later on in the game it was just, just kind of that energy. You know, it's just that vibe that, you know, I really just can't even describe. It's just something where, you know, I've been doing this for so long and I just feed off the other guys and my parents, everyone in the – coach everyone in the stands I mean it's just something that just comes and I just find myself you know watching it on the big uh, Megatron you know like <laughs> I don't even know what I just did there but you know it worked we so I'm just keep it going yeah yeah for real but I mean you know it's just like this energy that comes with the ball and with the offense and you know when we you know when we're you know got the energy and you know when we don't have it so you know clearly today we had it you know, some you know maybe some points we didn't really have it so much but we were able to pick it back up and it was just feeding off of one of each other I mean, to his credit I mean yeah like to your question I mean Matchups change, short stick lock offs, you know, and he just kept working. You know what I mean? A lot of guys can just kind of go hide at that moment and just say, well, let the other five guys, you know, win their matchup. And they took me out, and, you know, and he didn't do that, you know, we and we kept, you know, and obviously it's hot down there and there's a lot of adrenaline and a lot of energy being exhausted, but he just kept working and kept grinding and whatever the matchup was. And then, you know, to split that double team on the off the timeout late in the game and, and, and to feel it basically, you know, I mean, that's just uh, all athleticism and, um, you know, just want, you know, and I think he had more want today um, and um, and to his credit, and that's put us in the position where we are right now. Um, question for the both of you guys. Early on, we talked about early, and you were able to rattle Salisbury on both ends of the field, offensively and defensively. Tell me about how you uh, felt in that moment and how you were able to continue that going on. As I said, you came out of that 6-2, I think, starting yeah. that first quarter. Uh, I'll start off. I mean, I remember coming off maybe when it was, we were up maybe like 5-1 or so, 5-2. Um, I think it might have been 5-1. There was maybe a timeout called or something like that. And I come over the sideline and kind of gave everyone like a little, you know, calm down. I mean, we, there, it's been like that before when we played Salisbury. And then they just come out, you know, after the timeout, after a quarter or halftime, and then just run right down our throats. So I just knew that we needed to find the, you know, the in-between. We, you know, we couldn't get too high. We couldn't get too low. So we just really – I think that's been all year especially with, you know, unfamiliar territories that we've been going through, you know, keep advancing in the uh, tournament. So it's kind of keeping our, you know, staying mellow but excited and bringing the energy and everything like that. So I think it was just all around, you know, we just needed to find that sweet spot. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we try to ignore, you know, the score as much as possible, really. I mean, you watch all their games and you know they're going to come back with a punch, um, you know, and get themselves as close as they can or, you know, take that lead. And we knew that that was coming. We just try to have that, you know, next goal, next possession, next face-off, ground ball, whatever it was, have that mentality um, to, you know, carry us through, you know, the first quarter and then through the rest of the game. Jordan, Coach mentioned a little bit, uh, talked about being in Philly with a South Jersey guy. I imagine you're an Eagles fan. Oh, <laughs> he uh, better be. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be able to go play in the link next week? I mean – Something I've been dreaming of since I was a child. I mean, you know, I grew up wanting to be a football player and every always going to the Eagles games with my parents, and my uncles, and stuff. And I mean, my roommate but might be one of the biggest Eagles fans ever too. So <laughs> like, he's even more happier than we are. Um, but I mean, it's you know one of the coolest things. And I think you know we knew once we knew that came back down to Philly from Boston, and you know we just we it was that want you know we really wanted it, and I really wanted it. You know, I mean, a bunch of my friends came down the day and. I mean, I can't explain like how much support I have, which is awesome, and I know it's going to be crazy there. Um, so, I mean, what was it last year we had Jason Kelsey come down and talk mm -hmm. to the team? Um, yeah, so I mean, I know he's got our back, and I'm sure a lot of the Philly Eagles guys and all-around sports teams are going to be rooting for us. Uh, you know, I hope so. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a great time, unreal, and I'm just so so happy. Cool. Yeah. You talk about the the fan support that you've gotten. Can you guys talk about what it meant yeah. to have? 
so many people travel down here um, on graduation day uh, to support you and losing their minds in the stands for 60 minutes. That's right. It was graduation day, huh? Uh, whoops, guys. Sorry. Uh, I mean, already I mean, had one. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, he's on his second one. Uh, um, it means everything, you know. What I mean, it means everything to to the players, to the coaches. Uh, the support is unbelievable, um, and it's not an easy trip, you know what I mean. Um, down and on a Sunday night at five o'clock, you know what I mean. But uh, it means everything. It, it, it's uh, it's as much as their victory as it is ours, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's even bigger than you know us three or us fifty guys in the locker room. You know, this is for the twenty to twenty-five years of alums who have never been able to be in this position. You know, our friends and family who have been supporting us through high school and club ball and. You know, now we have a chance to, you know, receive or, you know, possibly win the highest, you know, the highest honor, highest prize that you want to win in lacrosse. So, um, you know, they support us and obviously it was a good showing today. Um, but, you know, we're, we're really back on that, um, that alumni, fan, friend, you know, support. Yeah, there's no doubt. Gentlemen, this is one more one and no day. That's it. Of course. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you.